Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson on trigonometry. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope you're having a good week so far. And thank goodness it's Thursday. It's almost Friday. One more day and then we've got the weekend. Right. Before we carry on, I want to show you how to enroll into the Grade 12 Maths class. Why am I showing you this again? Because firstly, there's probably new people watching us today. And secondly, because I know what students are like. I've been a teacher for many years. You guys will leave it till the last minute if you can. So let me show you how to do it. Go do it after this lesson and then you can be enrolled and then life is cool. Okay, don't leave it to the last minute. So what do you need? You need to go to your web browser, whether it be your Chrome, your Firefox, your Edge, whatever you want to use. Um, and I need you to type in www.toenable.org, okay, and you'll get to the landing page. Now, if you're a first time user, you need to register. So you register, you type in your first name, your last name, your email address, and you put, click register and you go through the process. Guys, it's not good enough just to register. You now need to come back and log in. So you log in, you type in your email address and your password. And the cool thing is you can click the remember me button. I like doing that because now I just put in the initial, my first initial C into the email address, it pops up my email address, I go yes, that one, and then my password's already popped in and I can click the login button and life is cool. Right, when you do that, you get to this page, um, except of course, if you guys haven't been this far yet, your page won't look this full. You'll have two subject, progress and results, and to enable help online. You need to then go click the big red button that says choose subjects and you'll come to another screen where there's a whole list of subjects. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until you get to mathematics and choose grade 12. Guys, again, like I said, you're welcome to enroll in grade 10 and 11 as well. I know what it's like in grade 12. Sometimes you didn't really concentrate in grade 10 or the teacher was going too fast or I don't know, you had boyfriend or girlfriend issues, whatever, and you weren't focusing and they did the beginnings of sequences and series and now you're supposed to know what APs and GPs are and you haven't a clue. So go enroll in the grade 10 and 11 maths if you need to and go watch those videos or go use the material on the system. Wait, I'm so busy. Anyway, so you go and you click on that and you enroll and it's going to pop you back to this screen here. And now you'll have a little blue button that says maths grade 12, which means you are done. Excellent. Now, the live assessment. If you have a live assessment in the subject that you've enrolled in, there'll be a little red button with a number next to it, like one or two, whatever, depending on how many live assessments we have. And as I've explained before, the reason for the live assessments is that I can get an idea of how you guys are doing in your classes, okay, and in the work. So for example, at the moment we're doing trigonometry. What I'd really like to do is I'd like to run a live assessment after this, and then you guys can answer it, and I will get an, a post that says or graph that says oh look 60% of the class really do not know how to do proving left hand right hand things so then I can have a lesson specifically on that okay so there you go now upcoming events this we use to see the live sessions so instead of clicking on the Facebook or Twitter feeds or whatever you did to get here you can go and click on the upcoming events and you will get through to this page here you then need to scroll down to wherever you need to be because you might see like for example at the moment on the system I think there's today and tomorrow's math um, lessons that I've uploaded already there might be more, I can't remember. So the point is you need to go right, look at the right date and then click view event and you'll get this pop up. The green thing, which is okay, is just saying, okay, I've seen what you're gonna do. We're gonna continue through the Eastern Cape Common Paper or whatever you're gonna do. If you wanna go to the live link, you click on the open live TV link and you'll get to the page that has this on it. Okay, now, first things first, it's gonna say grade 12 mathematics, okay, with the start time and the date. There is a button that says open feed in new tab, and I personally would do that because it makes the screen slightly bigger, which is always nice. Then you need to click the big green button. 
it says join the event not the white and blue one the big green one okay it says join the event okay now the cool thing about this green big green button is that if you have sport or you're just busy and you can't get to the internet or your computer or your cell phones run out of data or whatever the Wi-Fi couldn't connect and you couldn't watch this live then you can watch a recording okay another reason the recordings are cool is that if for example we're doing trig and today we're going to carry on with yesterday's rules which are the compound angle and the double angle formula and let's say you want to go through those questions again to see what was going on then you can go watch a recording of it okay but, but, here's the proviso. When you get to the screen, which has got the lesson on it, you will see this button here, which says Message Studio. It's on the previous one as well. Hang on, let me go back. There it is there, Message Studio. But the problem is that the Message Studio button only works during a live TV show. Now, why is the Message Studio button important? Because the reason I'm doing Trig at the moment is because I was asked to. One of the students actually said, um, we're really struggling with compound and uh, double formula, compound angles and double formula. So, I mean, compound <laughs> formula and double formula. So, can you please go through that section with us, which is why I'm doing it. A little while before, we had another student, a couple of students said, can we go through circle geometry? So we went through the whole of circle geometry from baby circle geometry all the way through to grade 12 circle geometry. So that's the one reason why you'd want to message me. Another reason would be that you might say, well, um, I really need help with a certain couple of questions on exam papers and we could set aside a time and we could make a plan to go through that. So when I say set aside a time, I mean as in at the end of the trick section, we can go and look at those exam paper questions. The whole point is this is supposed to be a way for you guys to communicate what you want us to do. Um, Anyway, like at the moment when I'm doing trick, the only thing is when you're watching a recording, this button here does not work. Why not? Because I'm not there. You could be watching this at 3 a.m. in the morning because you, I don't know, bored, sleepless and trying to get back to sleep and my voice is so melodic that it gets you to go to sleep. I really hope that's not the case. Okay, so guys, you can't message the studio if you're watching a recording, but if you're watching this live, you can message me. So please do. Okay, so let's move on to our trig. And yesterday we were doing this one. So um, it said to prove the identity, and I asked you to tr try it for yourselves. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through it again for you guys, and I want to show you how to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the left hand side okay we're going to look at the left hand side remember what i said to you do not do not in any circumstances ever assume that these are equal and then go from there you're proving that the left hand side equals the right hand side so what we are going to do is we need a cast diagram all stations to cape town and remember that we're working with co ratios here as well as with your double angles and compound angles. Okay, so we've got cos squared, cos squared, 90 plus theta, all over cos of minus theta plus sine, hmm, sorry, let me just get rid of that, plus sine of 90 minus theta, cos theta. Okay, and we want to manipulate this somehow. So where is the cos of 90 plus theta? Do you agree the cos of 90 plus theta is in which quadrant? Which quadrant is cos of 90 plus theta? I'm really hoping that you guys are going, well, this is naught, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and this is 360. So if you go to cos of 90 plus theta, you should be looking at the second quadrant. The second quadrant. And where is the second quadrant? Um, the second quadrant is over here. Okay, so it's a co-ratio okay but cos is negative in that quadrant and the co-ratio of 90 plus theta is sine theta so this becomes minus sine theta but it's all squared because of that little square there okay all squared 
all over cos of negative theta. So cos of negative theta, negative theta is in this quadrant. So cos of negative theta is just going to be cos theta plus sine of 90 minus theta. What is the co-ratio of sine of 90 minus theta? It is just going to be cos theta times by cos theta. Okay, right, so there we go. So what do we have? We've now got sine squared theta over cos theta plus cos squared theta. That's our left-hand side. That's our left-hand side. We now need to somehow get it to equal our right-hand side. Okay, so what you can sometimes do is you can work both and see if you can get to a point where they are the same. So do you agree that this would be 1 over cos theta minus 1? But that's over 1. So do you agree we can have a common denominator of cos theta? And what are we left with? We're left with are we left with? Sorry, we're <laughs> left with um, 1 minus cos theta. Hmm, so somehow we need to get this to kind of look like that. Okay, so let's play a little bit. Do you agree that this could be rewritten as 1 minus cos, oh sorry, let me change color again. Um, eraser. Do you agree, this is kind of a tricky one, do you agree that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1? So do you agree I could write that as sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta? Do you see it? I'm just taking that across. Now there's a reason I'm doing that. I'm trying to work out a way that I could have cos theta at the top. So I want to rearrange the sine squared theta to have a cos theta at the top. So I'm going to go 1 minus cos squared theta. And now I need cos theta by itself at the bottom. So I'm going to take out a common factor of cos theta. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 plus cos theta. And now now you should be as the tricky bit you need to realize that this is the sum and difference of two squares so this could be written as one minus cos theta one plus cos theta all over cos theta one plus cos theta and that cancels with that, and there we go, we've got the right-hand side. Now, grade 12, this is actually a really tricky question, I must admit. It's not the easiest question I've ever seen in my life. And what's important about it as well is that you needed to work on the right-hand side as well. There was no way in hike that you would have actually, well, maybe, maybe, if you, if you then realized you could have gone, well, equals the right-hand side because you could take cos theta and divide it both into the one and the cos theta. Then maybe you would have got there, but it would have been much easier like we've done now to work down the right-hand side. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. And that's why I did it to show you there's nothing wrong with working this down. Oopsie, sorry. Working down this way and then working down here and then getting to a point where they're both equal. Okay. Now we're going to move on to two-dimensional trigonometric problems, okay? So before we move on, we need to go through ratios that don't use the right angle. So far we've used Sokotoa, which needs a right angle. Now we're going to talk about the sign rule, okay? The sign rule. So the rule is this. Okay, where the little a stands for the length of the side and the big A stands for an angle. We can say a over sine a is equal to b over sine b is equal to c over sine c. Or we can do it the other way around. That sine a over a is sine b over b, which is sine c over c. And obviously, guys, we're not going to use all three at a time. We just need two. So we can use A and C or B and C or whatever, or A and B. You don't need to use all three to make this work. You only need two, but they're just showing you that the ratios of these are the same no matter what, okay? The other rule that you need to know, which is on your formula sheet, guys, but all the both these um, 
formula on your formula sheet is the cos rule which says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a or we can solve for cos a we can take the b squared and the c squared across so it becomes a squared minus b squared minus c squared divided by minus 2bc let me show you okay if you do this and you solve for cos a it becomes a squared minus b squared minus c squared is minus 2bc it's supposed to be a c cos a okay now you need to divide both of these sides by minus 2bc so it's minus 2bc is equal to minus 2bc 2bc okay so those cancel so you end up with cos a is equal to this thing but it's horrible having a minus sign here so what we do is we divide out the minus okay so we change it so then we go minus into plus is a minus so this becomes a minus that becomes a plus that becomes a plus and that becomes a plus so it becomes b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc you do not need to do this it is fine for you to have minuses in it okay i'm just showing you how they got to that formula there you do not need to do that okay now what's important about the cos rule is we tend to use a cos rule when we've got two sides and an enclosed angle Okay, whereas the sine rule we use when we've got two opposite, well, I'll show you. Okay, so another rule that you need to know is the area rule, which is a half AB sine C, and that is also on your formula sheet, a half AB sine C. So it would be a half, this side times that side, sine times by this sine of the enclosed angle. Okay, so let's go through some examples. The best way to do this is to get example in. So it says TP is a tower. And apparently the letters aren't in okay it's foot p and the points q and r are on the same horizontal angle then from q the angle of elevation to the building is x okay so that's q and that's r can't believe this drawing okay right so let's change color now that we've written that in okay it says t it's foot p the q points q and r in the same horizontal plane so i I often say to my students that the easiest thing to do to try and help you is just to color this in a little bit like green. It doesn't have to be green, but just to remind you that this is kind of the field, okay? It's on the same horizontal plane. So this is the ground and that there is your tower. And if it helps you, feel free to draw in a little tower, okay? A little tower going up or whatever, just to help you with the three-dimensional thing. Okay, right. Now it says, I know that we said we we're going to do 2D and 3, 2D stuff, but 2D and 3D are so interchangeable because this could have been a 3D question, a 2D question, okay, that I have just let this go, okay, so I mean I've allowed for it to happen. So now let's have a look. It says, from Q, the angle of elevation to the top of the building is X, okay, so that means when we're standing at Q and we look up, we see that the angle there is X. It says angle PQR is 150 degrees, angle QPR is Y, and the distance between P and A is R, I mean between P and R is A. It says prove that TP, we want to prove that TP is equal to A, so we want to do with A, tan X cos Y sin Y minus root 3 sine y. Okay, so do you agree that we want to get TP, but we want to relate A, Y, and X to it? So we're obviously moving from this triangle that's on the ground, this PQR triangle, to the triangle that is yeah TPQ. So what we need is a bridge. And our bridge, you always need to find a bridge when you are doing this trig, okay? And our bridge is this line here. Okay, that line there is going to get us from this triangle here, triangle PQR, into triangle TPQ. That's what it's going to do. So we need to work out how long we need to work out a ratio of PQ. Okay, so do you agree we've got 150 degrees and we've got A? We've got Y but we don't have QR and we want PQ. But do you agree this is a right angle triangle? So I can work out what little angle R is, or big angle R. I can say this is 180 minus 150 plus Y. Okay, 
which do you agree becomes 150 minus, uh, 180 minus 150 is 30 plus y. Actually, it's 30 minus y. 30 minus y. Do you agree with that? That is 30 minus y. So this angle here is 30 minus y. How did I get that? That's the angle sum of triangles. All the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So this angle plus that angle plus that angle have to equal to 180. So I've just subtracted them and I get 30 minus y. So now do you agree I can use the sine rule, which makes sense because there is a sine y and I'm seeing a root 3. And as soon as I see a root 3, I'm getting suspicious about the fact that I might have to use this angle here where this is 2, 1, root 3. I might have to use something along those lines. Okay, so let us use our sine rule. So we're going to go PQ over sine of 30 minus y, okay, because it's sine of 30 minus y, is equal to a over sine of 150. Okay, so it's a over sine of 150 is equal to pq over sine of 30 minus y. And a lot of my students go, well, how do you know you need to do this, the letters at the top or the length at the top and the sign at the bottom and not the other way around. It actually doesn't matter because it all is going to work out the same in the end. If you do the signs at the top, you just need to rearrange the sum at the end. We're going to solve for PQ. That's what we're aiming to do. We're aiming to solve for PQ. Okay, so if we do that, we get PQ is equal to A sine, that's an A, sine 30 minus Y all over sine of 150, but do you agree that I can rewrite that as sine of 180 minus 30? And sine of 180 minus theta is the same as sine theta. So therefore we've got A sine 30 minus Y all over sine 30. Okay, so now we need to change this thing here we need to use our compound angles, okay? Because of the fact that this is a compound angle, 30 minus y. So it becomes a times by, okay? Sine of 30, how does the compound rule go? Sine, cos, cos, sine. So it's sine of 30, sine of y. The sine tends to change, stays the same, so it's minus, oh, hang on, I'm making a mistake. Oh, I'm making a mistake. Making a mistake, that's a cos, that's a cos. It becomes sine, cos, cos, sine, keeps the sine. Sine of the T, cos, the reason I keep muttering these things to myself is because I didn't have a formula sheet when I was back in the dark ages when I was at school. Um, which means that I had to memorize these signs and causes. Okay, nowadays you guys get to have a formula sheet, which is very useful. Okay, right. So now, now we're going to use our socket toe and our special triangle. And can I tell you that I knew I was going to use a special triangle before I even got to this question. And you guys are going to go, oh, well, obviously you put the question up. No, that's not what I mean. I mean as in I saw this root 3. And as soon as I see a root 3, I'm thinking special triangles. Okay, I'm thinking I must be using, chances are there's a very high possibility that I'm going to use a special triangle. Okay, so we got A. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Sine of 30, here's your 30. Up, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, this is the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, it's a half cos y, okay? Minus cos of 30, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2 sine y all over sine of 30, which is opposite of our partners again, which is a half. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So now, if we look at this, do you see, let me just do some ticking, we've got the A, cha-ching! Do you see we've got the cos Y, 
and we've got the root three sine y, but there's a stupid half messing up around this. So therefore we can realize that what's gonna happen is we're gonna to have to take that half out. So we've got a, do you agree we can take out a common factor of a half here? So we're left with a half cos y minus root three sine y all over a half. Hmm, so those cancel, yay. So do you see now the most of the sum is already solved. We've now got the root three, we've got the sine y, we've got the minus, all we need is a tan x. Okay, but now we need to relate this side here to TP, okay? But according to x, this is the opposite side and with respect to x, I say, and this is the adjacent side. So, and we know that tan is opposite over adjacent. So I can go tan x is equal to the opposite side, which is TP, over the adjacent side, which is PQ. Therefore, I can say TP is PQ tan x. But look, tan x is this thing here. So, yay, it works. It becomes A cos y minus root 3 sine y and then times by tan x. Woohoo! Okay, so do you see that the whole way, the most important thing, the very most important thing that you need to do with these questions is to find your bridge. So I personally would say to you guys, and I seriously mean this, guys, take colors into your exam paper, take highlighters, crayons make sure that you can don't make take things that are like so dark that you can't really see something so if you write over it you can't see what the numbers are or something take something like a highlighter that you can see after you've highlighted and don't be shy to highlight and color in like I've done there obviously you can spend all your time coloring in and not doing the sum I've had students do that as well please don't do that but you get the idea okay so now let's do a different example and this is a proper 2d question okay you've got at point n on the tower, again a tower, which is little n meters from the top. Okay, that's little n. A bird has made a nest. Okay, so here's the nest. Okay, and there is a birdie num num. There is the bird. Okay, yes, I know. Terrible drawing. Okay, the angle of inclination from G to point A is alpha. So all the way from here to here is alpha. Okay, that's alpha. The angle of inclination from G to N is beta. So from there to there is beta. Now they say express angles A, G, N, A, G, N in terms of alpha and beta. Okay, well that's not too difficult because if the whole of this is alpha and the whole of this is beta, then surely this bit here, which is angle A, G, N, is just going to be alpha minus beta. It's the big angle minus the small angle. Okay, not too bad, hey. Now it says express angle A in terms of alpha and or beta. So now we want this dude here, okay? Right, do you agree that if we look at the big triangle, if we look at angle triangle A, G, T, this angle is 90 degrees, the whole of this angle here is alpha. So we can get angle A, we can say A is 180 degrees minus 90 plus alpha. Okay, do you see that? There is the 90, the whole of this is alpha. So this angle is 180 minus that, which can be written as 180 minus 90 minus alpha, which is 90 minus alpha. Okay, moving on. Now it says, show the height of the nest from the ground H. They want this, huh? They want this. Mm, that's not the right color at all. Let's do this. They want this height, just there, that bit there. And they want us to prove that the height is, hang on a minute, I need another color, in cos alpha, cos alpha, the big one, okay, sine beta over sine of alpha minus beta. Hmm. So do you agree we have to get from this triangle, because we've got n here, 
to this triangle. Okay, so we obviously need to work out something using this side here. So that's our bridge. Our bridge is going to be this line here. That's our bridge. Okay, so we need to work out the length of that side using the man. Using, I'm going to get to a these pens really. Using N, and then we obviously need the little blue one because we've worked out that is alpha minus beta, and we obviously need this angle here. So, <clears throat> I'm thinking we need sine rule because we've got this angle here, which is 90 minus alpha. We've got this angle here, which is alpha minus beta, which looks very similar to that. And we want this side here, and we've got N. So let's say in this triangle here, in triangle AG, what is it? AGN. Okay, in triangle AGN. I'm just writing that to make it easier for you guys to understand where I'm going. Do you agree that? N over sine of alpha minus beta. I'm saying this side over the opposite angle of alpha minus beta is equal to GN, GN over sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay, that angle there. This side is opposite to that angle, so those two work, okay? Therefore, GN, GN is our bridge. Uh, therefore, GN, I'm just rearranging, is equal to N sine of 90 minus alpha over sine of alpha minus beta. Okay, so that's looking pretty good because if we tick now, we've got N, we've got sine of alpha minus beta, then we've got the sine of 90 minus alpha. But now, if we look over here, and this is another tip I really want to tell you guys about, always look to see what you're aiming for. And you can see that you're aiming for cos alpha. And if you look over here, you've got sine 90 minus alpha. And I'm hoping that that's ringing bells, that these are co-ratios. So therefore, we can say, oh, well, this is obviously N cos alpha over sine of alpha minus beta. So we've already got the cos alpha, which tells you what we're going to have to do to get to H. We're going to have to use sine of beta, which is pretty obvious. Okay, sine of beta, we want beta. We're using beta. This is the opposite side, and that's the hypotenuse. So obviously, we're going to use sine beta. So we're going to say, I'm running out of space here. We're going to say, I'm going to do it over here. Sine of beta is equal to the opposite side, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is GN. So do you agree that H is going to be GN sine of beta? All I've done is take that across there. But GN is all this. So therefore, we can say, and I'm writing down here, yeah, that H is equal to GN, which is this bit here, which is N cos alpha over sine of alpha minus beta times by sine beta times by sine beta and ta-da that's exactly what you were supposed to prove okay so again what are the tips the tips are always look at what first of all use what they've asked you to prove from beforehand obviously okay they asked us to prove alpha minus beta they asked us to find um, a using either alpha or beta, so we knew that we we're going to use, use that. Secondly, highlighters, find your bridge between your two triangles and then go for it. Okay, so let's do, oh, now it says calculate the height of the nest. If n is 10 meters, okay, I can actually erase. Um, it says calculate the height of the nest if n is 10 meters, so you've got n is 10 alpha or a is 68 and beta equals 40. So all we have to do is substitute into that. We're going to have 10 cos 68 sine 40 all over sine of 68 minus 40. So we just need to pop that into our calculators and work that out. So that's kind of like bonus marks. I don't know what I've got there. Sorry guys, let me just go there and then go there and I missed it. 
Okay, so kind of like bonus marks. And the nice thing about this type of question is even if you couldn't prove this, you can still do this question. So please, guys, don't think that if you couldn't prove this yet, you can still have to stop. Go and look to see if there's more you can do, okay? So we got a fraction and we got 10, mm -mm, 10 cars, 68, close bracket, sign, 40, mm -mm, 40, close bracket, all over the sign, and that's going to be 28, close bracket, equals 5.13 times by 10 to the 0, so that's just 5.13. So therefore, H is 5,13 meters. There you go. Okay. Let's try one more example, but now we're doing 3D, but we've kind of cheated. We've already been doing 3D, but this is serious 3D because this is not just um, two surfaces that could actually be lying next to each other. We now have lots of angles of elevation as well as an, a triangle that's at a funny angle. Okay, so D is the top of a tower of height H. Okay, so let's go. Where are we? Um, D is the top of a tower, height H. The triangle ABC, they beautifully covered it in for you already, lies on the ground. We have BC that equals little b. We have DBA, angle DBA, okay, fine, that equals alpha. We've got angle DBC that equals beta, and angle DCB equals theta. Now it, show, it says show that H, we want to relate H, to B, okay, sine alpha, sine theta, and sine beta plus theta. Okay, so do you see that we actually want to relate this triangle here to this triangle here? That's what we're trying to relate. We're trying to relate these two triangles. Okay, so that's why I always tickle for highlight what we got and what we need to prove and everything else. Because they say let H equal B. So we need that one. Okay, admittedly that's in the ground, but beta and theta are this blue one. Okay, and theta separately is also in the blue one, and then alpha is in the green one. So therefore, it's definitely the green triangle to the blue triangle. So therefore, what is our bridge? Obviously, our bridge, and it's not going to help us to do black. Obviously, our bridge is this line here. Okay, because that line is the line that is shared between the green triangle and the blue triangle. So what we need to do is we need to somehow relate somehow relate those two triangles to each other using that line. So what you need to understand first of all is that this is a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle, right? Because this is a pole or tower. That's a tower and this is on the ground. So this green triangle is a right angle triangle with A being the right angle. So do you agree I can relate H and alpha to this. This is the hypotenuse, and this is the opposite side. And if we think right angle sarcotoa, then sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So I can say, okay, in that triangle, in DAB, in triangle DAB, we can say that sine of alpha is equal to the opposite side, which is DA, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is DB. Okay, therefore we can say that DB is equal to H over sine alpha. Okay, all I've done is taken DB and multiplied it both by both, both sides. Okay, so now it's on that side. And then I've divided both sides by sine alpha and we end up with a sine alpha on this side. So DB is H sine alpha. So now let's have a look at this. Okay, we're actually trying to solve for H. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. Sorry. Let's go back to this bit here. 
causing too much of a hurry. Okay, so we're solving for H, okay? So we're gonna say H is equal to, um, hang on, opposite of hypotenuse over DB is equal to sine alpha. So do you agree that H is equal to DB sine alpha? Okay, so so far we've got sine alpha. Life is good. Now we need DB somehow with the rest. So we're gonna look at this blue triangle here. And obviously there's no right angle triangle, so therefore we're looking at sines, cos, and tans. We've got this side here, it's a B. We've got a theta and a beta, and we want this side. And you'll notice that we're using sines. So obviously we're looking at the sine rule, okay? Now, we've got B, but we need the opposite angle of B, which is this one here. And that angle is going to be 180 minus beta plus theta. Why? That's beta and that's theta. So this, using the angle sum of triangle, is going to be 180 minus beta plus theta. Okay, so therefore we can say B over sine of 180 minus beta plus theta is equal to db over sine theta. There it is. Therefore, db is going to be b sine of, now you guys need to know that sine of 180 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Okay, it's one of those things you just have to know, right? So that is sine of 180 minus theta is going to be the same as sine of beta plus theta, okay, multiplied by sine theta. I've taken that and I've taken it across. So then we've got sine theta and we've got sine beta plus theta, and that is all dB. So therefore, H is going to be all this multiplied by sine alpha, and it works. So we end up with B sine theta sine alpha all over sine of beta plus theta. Sure. Okay, grade 12. I think that's enough for today. Um, I think what we can do, what's going on? My computer's frozen. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Yes, it did. Um, we will carry on with doing some more 3D trick um, tomorrow. As you can see, they've got some nice questions. And then we'll see how far we go with that. Have a great day.